Hello, Guru Fateh. Welcome to the Sikhcast. My name is Manpreet Singh. Thank you for being with us. We are here with the Shabbat of the week, and I have two very special guests with me. I have Inikar here, and I have Harinder Singh together on this podcast. Guys, Guru Fateh, welcome. Guru Fateh. Thank you. Thank you, Manpreet, and Guru Fateh to you and to your listeners as well. And so let's talk about the Shabbat, which happens to be one of our last Shabbats. <clears throat> Sorry, let me do that again. Let's talk about this Shabbat, which happens to be our last podcast on Shabbat of the Week. And we'll get into why later on in this podcast. So today's Shabbat is titled, On the Platter Are Placed Three Things. Harinder Singh, please take it away. And then Inikar, uh, please read the English transcription. Sure, Manpreet. Thanks. Uh, Mundavani Mahala Panjwa. Hal vich tin vastu payyo, sat santok vicharo. Amrit naam thakur ka payyo, jiska sab se adharo. Jeko khawe, jeko punche, tiska hoye udharo. Ehe vast taji nah jai, nit nit rakh ur taro. Tam sansar charan lag tariya. On the platter are placed three things. Reflect on the truth and the contentment. Ruler's immortal naam is also placed on it. It is the support of all. If someone eats and savors it, that one is emancipated. This thing cannot be forsaken. Every day, keep it in the heart. Nanak, cross the dark, ignorant world ocean in feet surrender. All is the transcendence expanse. Arinda, let me start with you. Let's talk about Mandavni. And what it is, uh, everyone's pretty familiar with it. I'm sure if you do that us every night, and this happens to be the last Shabbat um, towards the end of Guru Granth Sahib. So let's talk about Mandavni and the main idea of this Shabbat. Sure. Uh, so just uh, as a background, actually the word Mandavni appears in two different forms within Guru Granth Sahib. Uh, it comes as Mandavni, as most uh, Sikhs who read Guru Granth Sahib are aware of it, or at least when they do Raras. But it also appears as the term Mudavani, without the Na or N sound. Uh, and it may, means the same, and I want to discuss that because Mudavani or Mundavani are referring to something very similar. And when it comes as Mudavani, it's invoked by Guru Amar Das Sahib. And he doesn't name the three things, but he, he asks, what are those things? And it comes on the young 645 or page 645 of Guru Granth Sahib. And then it comes towards the end on the current versions of uh, page 1429, where Guru Sahib names it, in this case, Guru Arjan Sahib. So what is Madhavani or Mandavani? There are different schools of thought on, thoughts on it. I actually wrote a blog on it earlier in the year, which if uh, your listeners are interested, can Google it and find it on Sikh Research Institute website. But just uh, briefly, uh, the difference is the tippi, or the consonant N sound, as I was mentioning. But it's very common within Guru Granth Sahib that, for example, the word gobind sometimes appears as gobid, which means it's not a typo, it's just a variation of a word. Now, the couple of meanings of this is, if you go back to the old Indic traditions or South Asian traditions, um, um, uh, uh, that this idea comes from that it can mean printing, sealing, stamping, on marking, which essentially meant when the, uh, you know, there used to be food testers for the kings, and when they would certify or seal that it is safe and doesn't have poison in it, and this thal or platter can be presented to the king now, that used to be called that it has been mudrafied or it has been sealed or stamped as being authentic or clear or certified. Similarly, in the Punjabi dialect, in the, in the Pothohari region, which sometimes is called Pothwari, again, I don't want to get caught up into is it a dialect of Punjabi or is it a distinct language. Either one, however your audience understands Pothwari to be. 
Modavni there refers to a riddle. Generally speaking, during the wedding times, this is about, you know, where the girlfriends of the bride will serve some food on the thal and they will have some riddle which needs to be solved. And if the wedding party or groom's party would solve that, then they would serve the food to them. And that tradition um, of uh, where they're measuring the person's weight, intellect, or having fun with it, that used to be called Modavni. In fact, there are songs available even in today's um, uh, Maja reason where they're asking to either invoke this idea or solve a riddle. So we essentially end up with two different ideas. One is, is this the seal or is this the authentication of something? Or is this something which is asking to be solved, like a riddle to be solved? And the way um, I like to look at it is I integrate the two ideas because they're both being presented within Guru Granth Sahib. So the question I sort of end up raising is, uh, can you steal the riddle, which essentially is, are you able to solve it for yourself? So that's one way to look at what Mudavani or Mundavani is, which is asking us a question, then Guru is presenting us options, and then presenting his idea whether you are able to solve it or not. Great. And so is there any reason, before I get to any car, is there um, or maybe a main thought that Guru Arjun Sab had to close out or out, let me just say close out Guru Granth Sahib with this Sabbath? I mean, yes, I mean, there are, there, are, there are things we can get into, but for example, if I look at what Guru Amar Das Patshah presented, he asks a question to all the seekers where he says, on the platter are placed three things, and all pervasive immortal fare is the essence, by eating which the mind is satiated, the gateway to freedom is attained, and he continues with that. But he doesn't mention what are the things. But when Guru Arjan Sahib does it, he's actually saying there are three things. And there is a little bit of a difference of opinion, as I mentioned earlier. Some people believe the three things are truth and contentment and reflection. Um, another way to look at it is it's actually saying it's truth and contentment. And why don't you reflect on it? Because then he says the third thing is the immortal nam, which is how you actually become free if you eat it and savor it, as you heard the transcreation what Dini Kaur was reading. So Guru Arjan Sahib, by including, so the Sikh tradition currently reads Mundavani, even if there's a variation on where Guru Granth Sahib ends, but everyone reads Mundavani. So I think that's the unification point. Um, everyone reads it, which means uh, most people, or most of the, uh, everyone believes that this is part of Guru Granth Sahib, which means, some people end it here, some end it with Ragbala. So it being at the end that after you have read through Guru Granth Sahib, for whatever reason you were reading the Bani, whatever reason, whether it is to gain knowledge or to develop a relationship, which I personally believe uh, Sikhs read Guru Granth Sahib primarily to develop a relationship with the Kuvankar. What our, our, our work here is not to just gain knowledge. But if, even if somebody is gaining to just knowledge, all of this is being done and at the end of the day, after you have done, gone through these readings and recitations and singings and discussions and interpretations, have you really figured out what really sustains you and the universe? And have you figured out how to develop your relationship with Nam? So I feel the essence idea or the sealing idea or the solving of the little idea is that after you have gone through your explorations or readings, you need to end up uh, in some sort of a question for yourself, which essentially is, do I, do I know Nam? Do I have Nam? Do I have a relationship with Nam? And this is where it's ending. Uh, the, the Mandavani is ending it there. Great. Any car? We would love your thoughts. Mm. Um, that was wonderful, Harinda. And, you know, Manpreet, it's been an incredible journey, you know, which we've been on for 52 weeks. And as we end uh, this, I want to say, exquisite Shabbat of the Week series, I want to share with you and our listeners a quote of Professor Puran Singh. And this is what he, um, you know, this is what he writes. The whole of the Guru Granth is the voice of a wedded woman pining in love for the beautiful. Her nobleness in Guru Granth is infinite. Her freedom is of the highest. Both man and woman as sexes are forgotten in her voice. 
she becomes a supreme reality and a freed soul. In the freed soul alone is the subordination of the one to the other effectively abolished and all disputes hushed. Now I'd like to share with you my thoughts. For me, the entire Guru Granth is a collection of poetic love letters which I savor and read over and over. Something profound opens within me with each reading. For in this divine collection, the pangs of a lover yearning for the beloved are revealed, the beloved that resides within us all. But these love letters are to be read with an open heart, for only then, and only then, can one feel the presence of the beloved. Songs of love repeating the name of the beloved resound from this divine collection. Those who do not ache with this agony of love will find them repetitive. But for those who suffer these pangs, they will find joy and bliss in them. For only and only when the lover dies into the beloved does the lover realize how much the beloved loves Exquisite intimacy and tenderness flows throughout this entire love process. For lovers, the Guru Granth Sahab, this divine collection, is a treasure trove of infinite love and wisdom. Precious jewels reside within. And lovers yearn to adorn themselves with these jewels. To reflect on the immortal Nam, for only through Nam can we come to know or understand what truth is or experience it. And when Nam comes to reside within, the Santok, the, con- the commitment, will be Sadha, eternal. This is what flows from this precious, exquisite divine collection, the eternal Nam, the eternal Sat, the truth, the eternal Santok, the contentment. And this is what is placed at the end of this exquisite collection. So for you, for us, to experience Nam, truth, contentment, read, Favor the Guru Granth. Those are my thoughts on this exquisite ending of the Guru Granth, which I revere so much. You know, after all these podcasts that we have done too, what I'm realizing is there's a lot in all the Shabbats we did that talk about divine identification. And even in this Shabbat, you know, Nam, divine identification. And I think that's very, very important and how people, you know, identify with Ikhto Angar and know what it is. And, uh, you know, we're ending with this Shabbat, but can we just talk about divine identification a little and it's how it's very, uh, I didn't want to say important, but how it's uh, one of the major uh points or ideas, I would say, in uh, Guru Granth Sahib, that I, I see it in so many Shabbats that we do. How do we, how as Sikhs or, you know, going on this journey, how do we get, um, uh, you know, we know, we know the basics, but how do we get stronger? How do we get even more confident? How do we get unshakable, you know? And I don't want to say blind faith, but really, really unshakable on a di- an, divine identification uh, with the Gongkar and the Bani itself and all the Shabads uh, in Guru Granth Sahib. So I'll ask Karinda first and then Anikar, I would love your thoughts too. Sure. So Manpreet, uh, let's look at what you asked within the context of this Shabad. And it's an excellent question what you're asking because at the end of the day, that's what the journey is about. In fact, it's saying 
within this Shabbat it says the the as we as as we read it in English where it said that um, you know this idea of crossing the dark which is ignorant world ocean requires a surrender of some kind which means acceptance that my individual self does not have all the answers because the the expanse of the transcendent is vast so in this journey of life what do i do to get numb and you know this is where the word sat and santok here they are not just truth and contentment although they are that for sure but these actually became religious orders in south asian traditions where people became satis and santokis and what guru arjan sahib is saying the the offering to humanity by guru nanak sahib was that he believed ikko ankar is nami as well which means the one who has nam in it and he actually was giving and making every single individual who wanted to who wanted to by choice experience the nam to make all of them namis this is very important to understand because six have sort of run away from this tradition now we talk about nam now we maybe discuss nam and maybe we have some interpretations which are born out of our own minds like divine identification but this is not it namis were those who became actually uh, as we will say chiseled by the gurus who went beyond the satis and santokis and the huge differentiation is the satis and santokis are very individualistic they're all about their emancipation and in this shabad even it says that this is not about studying and becoming yourself free this is actually about not just studying this or understanding khave and punche this is experiencing it and those who experience it they become free and they become namis and namis are as much about their freedoms of every kind as they are about freedoms of everyone around them so this is a huge thing about nam the namis the actual nami the real nami is the kankar but we as a uh, the ones who develop the relationship the ones who experience nam also become namis in collective and our job is not to be free ourselves or to be truthful ourselves or to be contented ourselves but to make our surroundings truthful and contented and that can only happen when individual does not just study it or does not just interpret it or does not just you know sit together to sing it it actually happens jeko khave when you actually eat it which means you are consuming it the puncha you are savoring it which means this becomes part of your lifestyle everyday lifestyle thank you uh, inikar you know when you ask the question how do you you know about nam to me and then you know listening as i was listening to what harinder singh was saying you know but nami i mean to me when i think about nam is is really ikunkar the oneness the divinity the divine how do i experience that and this is where language comes into play because you know we have struggled with these shabds or i call as i say love letters we struggle to translate them transcreate them into the english language and the english language just doesn't you know to, but to tell you the truth it's just impossible to adequately translate them because there is such depth in each word even the word nam and now we've been introduced or there's introduced not to the audience at least nami so just to understand what nam and nami is requires an, a, a totally different podcast but these shabds and these words flow from an exquisite place of beauty and sound and they require a great sensitivity to be able to understand them and this is you know you ask how do you make it firm and how do you do all that because the entire guru granth there are images symbols and metaphors that flow effortlessly and what do these images and uh do to us they raise they want to raise or they raise our consciousness and when our consciousness is raised what happens our ignorance dissipates you know the illusions that we have they may fade 
And there's a deep silence that descends within us. And this is when that silence enters, that a lover stands before the beloved. That is that meeting that you yearn for. Because in this meeting, there is that nectar that cascades the amrit. And that is when life blossoms. And that is when the fragrance within you emanates. And that is when the gratitude flows by itself. And there's a realization that dawns that nam is everything. How do you even describe it or capture it? Because it has to be experienced. And that, to experience nam, is through Bonnie. For me. Does that help? Well, it certainly does. And so I want to get to the final thoughts on this, Shabbat. And like I said before in the beginning of the podcast, that, you know, if you do that, us, you're very familiar with this. Um, and you uh, say it every day. And so with that being said, I'm sure, you know, when families are doing that, us, they have kids there too. You know, it's hard sometimes for kids to reflect on these things. So with the final thoughts too, maybe uh, you guys can talk about how do you explain this to, uh, you know, youngsters? How do you explain this to people in elementary school and also in high school that are, you know, everyone's going through certain changes in life? in high school as well. So how uh, how would we explain this to the youngsters? If you could just include that in your final thoughts, that would be great. Um, Harinder, we'll start with you. Sure. I, I think uh, the, the, the Shabbat actually has a very uh, mundane way of explaining, which everyone can understand, that Jeko Kava Jeko Pancha is an is a actual everyday process the things we eat and savor, we actually experience them. So this is where this is, now we'll take it to the next level in the final thoughts. So I think kids will understand it every day. People understand it, that this idea of Nam is something which goes beyond uh, learning only. Like in our case, when both of us were doing transcreations, uh, our idea, our understandings have changed. As we spend more time with the Shabbat, what we understood the same Shabbat four years ago, a year ago, and today is different because it's evolving, it's developing. In fact, this is might be a good time to even mention that anyone who says that they have a final answer on the interpretation of Gurbani is part of the problem our Panth is facing today because people have said they have the final interpretation down, which is what causes problem. Naam is to be experienced. Our understandings change. This is why when, um, as, a, as, a, as a student of Gurbani, or as a scholar of Gurbani, or as a lover of Gurbani, whatever you want to call it, those are different ways to read Guru Granth Sahib. When a Sikh of the Guru reads Guru Granth Sahib, his or her purpose is to connect, to develop that relationship with the Kuankar. Rest of the time, they may be just wanting to understand it or appreciate it or create a political ideology or a spiritual ideology out of it. But when a Sikh of the Guru is reading Guru Granth Sahib, the sole purpose is, I want to connect and be like the Kuankar. So when we come into this mode, it basically means we want to experience the divine, have the Nam in us, and we do it in a very simplistic way, in an innocent way. And uh, innocence is largely seen in, in the younger generations. So if we are those who are older, those who are considering themselves to be grown-ups, maybe we need to become more innocent and then read Guru Granth Sahib Shabbat. And perhaps we will start experiencing it because we will enjoy it, we will savor it. Great, thank you. Um, Inikar? You know, this for me is very um, if you visual. So the thing that I would ask the children is, what is it? What are the three things that you want on this beautiful plate which you want to enrich your life? And then work with them on that. And don't you want to be honest? And don't you want, you know, I would turn the contentment into this flowing happiness idea. And don't you want Bahai Guru with you? So those three things, and you build on that. 
Because the children will understand that what is it that you want on your plate? To be strong, to be healthy, you know, to get on with life. And those are the three ideas you take out from there. That's it. That's what they need. Just what's on your plate? Keep in mind, is that what you're eating? Is that what you want to be a part of your life? Is that what you're enjoying? So, you know, whatever you're doing in life, go back to those three things. Is this going to get you to experience the truth? Is that going to continue to make you happy? Is that continue to, going to be do, doing that? So it's it's this particular Shabbat is a much uh, easier Shabbat to explain to the children. And I, I love it that it's at the end of the Reras and then you go into your dinner and it's so easy to slip into that conversation then. Oh, it definitely is. It has happened to me many times when I sit with uh, my extended family to do that. Um, uh, this was great. So I have you guys here and both of you guys here, and this happens to be the last uh, Shabbat of the Week podcast, but I don't want anyone to worry because there's going to be many more podcast series that we'll be doing next year to try to bring something new and fresh and something that um, hopefully uh, gives you enough wisdom and knowledge as the Shabbat of the Week podcast uh, have done. Uh, especially for me, I have to say I've grown so much just doing this uh, uh, Shabbat of the Week podcast. But I wanted to guys, I wanted both of you guys to give your thoughts on Shabbat of the Week, how it came about, why did you guys decide to do it, why the institute decided to do it, and if you guys could just share uh, with us uh, your uh, thoughts on that, that'd be great. Um, Inik or Rinder, either one uh, can and start it off. Mm, it's a personal question, Manpreet. Um, you know, you always ask those. So I think for me, um, the podcast came much later. Uh, the idea was um, I was going through probably last April, March, March, April. I was going through a rough part of my life where I felt very disconnected because there was my entire life had shifted a little bit. And I couldn't find the anchor, I couldn't center myself. So I began, began a practice that every evening, every night around 8.30, I began uh, translating, transcreating, understanding for myself a Shabbat. And, um, and as the months passed, there was a collection which I had developed, by, you know, about 20, I think, if I'm being kind to myself could be less. And then Harinda Singh and I had a conversation and I I told him about what I was doing and I said I'd love to do Shabbat of the Week project, you know, to bring it to our Sikri audience because I had done these translations and I wanted it to be weekly because that to me was like important. We have, how do you instill or inculcate a new understanding, a habit. I wanted it to become a habit. So we decided um, that, yes, definitely, let's do go for it. It was, it was, I did not realize that there's a great difference between 20 and 52. But we began that process of translating, transcreating, and then I must tell you this story. And at the end, and just it was last December, I remember, just before we were going to launch it, Harinda Singh says, well, you have to do a podcast with it. And I said, no, 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 no. I haven't done any podcast. And Manpreet, I had just done one with you. Do you remember that one? And, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, and that was, he said, no, 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 you must do this one. And I'm saying, what am I going to talk about? And uh, he said, well, you know, just talk to whatever you do or, you know, when you do your hooking numbers on your Facebook, your thoughts on that, and talk to the audience about why you use certain words in the translation. And I think that struck me because, you know, when I read translations, I'm always thinking, I said, why did the translator or the transcreator choose that word over this word? You know, what was it? And I think that idea intrigued me. And so we put together this podcast series, which you were very gracious to host. So it came about like that. But as 
I began the series, um, it definitely ch- changed um, what I sh- have shared. Uh, I feel it's my spiritual journey that I have shared. And there was definitely a shift um, in April of this year in the podcast because I realized that I needed to be uh, honest because I that was the only way I knew how to continue the uh, continue this series. Um, so I let my guard down and uh, said a lot of more things than I would normally write about. But it was much easier because we did them on a Friday, no, on a Sunday evening at 8.30. So it was at the end of the week. And it's been, um, you know, you say you've grown. I cannot even begin to tell you what this, these podcasts have done for me. Doing the Shabbat translation, transcreation as one level, an incredible level. But then getting into the depth and and becoming a part of it and what does it mean to you takes it to an entirely different level. So I'm very grateful that Harinder Singh pushed me um, and said the right thing that uh, to make me do it. My initial reaction is always no because I don't like to do anything new. But this one was... So very, very worth it. And I'm grateful to both of you, actually, to Harinder Singh for, uh, for putting that idea and, Harind- and Manpreet to you for hosting this. We are grateful, too. Harinder, any uh, final thoughts on Shabbos of the Week? Sure. Um, you know, it's been an incredible journey, to be honest. Uh, and one of the things we talked about early on when we started working on was the translation is not really something we wanted to do. We wanted to give more uh, as best we can understand, take it closer to uh, the original vocabularies. So we ended up picking the word transcreation, which implies that you're bringing a word to a different language and transporting into a different language from one language to another and, and you know, so we wanted to be very careful with it. And this is our understanding today, which might not be tomorrow. And then we also went after, let's actually talk about what Ram means, Allah means, Thakur means, instead of just writing God or divine in every case. You know, like Prabh has a different feeling. Then Allah has a different feeling. And Kant has a different feeling. Peter has a different feeling. These are feelings. These are relationships. Some are positional, some are personal, some are intimate. So this transcreating 52 Shabbats, as we best understand it, uh, you know, for 52 weeks has been uh, a very, very powerful journey in our own discussions, in our own sharings. And hopefully, um, please, and one of the, I guess, uh, uh, note at the end is, please do not stick to what we have transcreated because that's very limited understanding idea here is to inspire people to recite and sing the Shabbat personally the best you can and see what you can savor out of it. And that's what develops the relationship. Well, I appreciate both of you uh, being on the podcast, doing these transcreations. I'm sure the listeners have learned so much. I know I get feedback on my Twitter saying that was a great podcast. Um, So, um, you know, and they give me some criticisms too, which is great. But um, it's been a great journey, and I uh, just want everyone to know that um, we do have some other podcasts coming up. We're going to talk about the 12 Gurus um, in a series of podcasts next year, which we're working on right now. And to uh, both of you guys, uh, appreciate all your time, appreciate all your effort on educating me, and I'm sure educating many people out there. Uh, and I want the listeners to know this ain't the last. I'm sure we're going to have podcasts with Anikar and Harinder Singh um, in 2018 as well. But thank you for your time uh, and uh, Guru Fateh. Thank you, Manpreet. Guru Fateh. Thank you, Manpreet. Guru Fateh Ji.